Okay, I'll begin by starting the engine. This uses a compressed air line to spin the shaft up to speed by blowing on the compressor blades. And once a critical RPM is reached, ignition occurs and you can initially see combustion is still taking place in the exhaust stream, which is the fire you see shooting out of the back. The RPM continues to increase towards a self-sustaining condition. And the engine is now just about ready to self-sustain. Okay, the engine is now self-sustaining, so I'll dial back the throttle to idle. The engine is now idling, and I'm going to go over to the computer connected to the engine to record some data. While this is happening, I'll go over the various dials and displays you can see. The three displays show, from left to right, uh, the turbine inlet stagnation temperature, the nozzle life stagnation temperature, both those are in degrees Celsius, and the engine shaft RPM. The four dials at the bottom show, also from left to right, the engine oil pressure, the compressor exit stag stagnation uh, gauge pressure in PSI, the fuel supply pressure, and the compressed airline pressure. We'll look at some of these in more detail later on when we examine the transient response of the engine. Note that the idle speed is around 38,700 RPM. So we're just going to continue recording data for another 45 seconds or so here before uh, we do anything else. Alright, now I'm going to move the throttle up to roughly halfway, and you can hear the compressor speeding up and see that the RPM rises to about 50,000. Also note that the dial for the compressor exit pressure, which is the second one from the left, has noticeably risen. And now I've gone to record data at this operating point. Note that the turbine inlet temperature has gone up due to the increase of fuel flow associated with opening the throttle. We'll stay at this operating point for about one more minute. The steadiness of the engine operation is pretty impressive. The temperatures and rotational speed are changing very, very little, as you can see. Now I'm going to move the throttle up to the fully open position. You can again hear the compressor accelerate and the RPM rises to about 68,000. The turbine inlet temperature rises again and the compressor exit pressure also has gone up. We'll now record more data at this final throttle position.
get an idea of how much power is being extracted by the turbine by looking at the temperature difference between the turbine inlet temperature and the exhaust gas temperature. Now I'm going to bring the engine back down to idle slowly. In the rest of this video, we're going to look at the transient response of the engine. It'll be obvious from the sound when I move the throttle, so I'm zooming in on the displays to be able to see them more clearly. Now I'm increasing the throttle again and I want you to pay attention to the transient response of the engine. We see that both the RPM and the turbine inlet temperature rise right away, but the turbine inlet temperature overshoots because there's initially a surplus of fuel being put in and the compressor hasn't had a chance to catch up yet and provide more mass flow. As the mass flow rises and the RPM stabilizes, we see the turbine inlet temperature fall to a steady state value. Now move the throttle up to the fully open position again, and you can see the same transient response. Turbine inlet temperature rises, then falls a bit as the RPM reaches a near constant value. Now I've rapidly moved the throttle from fully open all the way down to idle. Show how long it takes for the machine to respond to a full throttle down response. And you can see it takes about 10 seconds. I'll let the engine settle at this condition. Now I've fully opened the throttle quickly from idle so we can see how long it takes the engine to get to steady state for a quick rise in fuel flow input. And you can see this is a little faster, only about 5 or 6 seconds. Again I'll let the engine settle here. Now I'm bringing the engine back down to idle gradually in preparation for shutting it down. There we go, back at idle. As 
as I prepare to shut the engine down, I'll zoom out the camera so we can see everything again. I've now stopped the engine, which means I've shut off the fuel flow. It'll take some time for the engine to stop spinning, however, due to its inertia and good bearings. You can hear the sound gradually getting quieter and deeper as the rotational speed drops. I'm taking the camera off the tripod now so that I can show you the engine inlet over on the side here. You can see the opening that lets air into the engine enclosure as well as the compressor inlet. You can't see the blades yet because they're spinning too quickly. machine continues to slow down. Now it's down to about 1400 RPM. That's still too fast to see the blades. Finally, you can see the compressor blade leading edges as the engine comes to a stop. And that's it.